Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of What, what the, the Flock. Flock. We are so glad to be back with you, and I'm I'm kind of got a little extra hop in my my chair here today because I'm so excited. We are with Will Allen. Welcome, who, welcome, Will. welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah. Who is, and you have to correct me if I don't say this right, but in my opinion, you are the director, producer, creator, editor, the everything er mm -hmm. of one of my all time favorite documentaries, wow. Holy Hell. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> we could take a couple of those titles da down. <laughs> I just yeah. gave them to you. Thank you. I just gave them to you. Now, I have to tell you, the first time I watched that documentary, I sobbed. Because it connected dots for me that I didn't know were there. Mm -hmm. Like I literally just sobbing and my little boy came out and he's like, what's the, what's the matter, mommy? I go, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. I'm just releasing. <laughs> but it really connected dots for me. So I'm mm -hmm. so excited to have you here. Mm -hmm. And as usual, we're going to start with a quote of the day that I picked out for you. And then Hoyt will more officially introduce you. No, I just yes. gave you the fangirl, you yeah. know, <laughs> intro. He's going to give you the official one. With my nerdy glasses on, here we go. Turn your demons into art, your shadow into a friend, your fear, your fear into fuel, your failures into teachers, your weaknesses into reasons to keep fighting. Don't waste your pain. Use it to recycle your heart. And that's a quote by Andrea Balt. And it made me think of you. Mm -hmm. it's that's, a, it's a, a, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. It's a good one. It's so using, it's, using right, every, it's using everything. Here's exactly. The, here's the official yeah. introduction. All right. Will Allen started making Super 8 movies at the age of 13 in Southern California. After graduating from film school in 1985, so that's when I graduated college, mm -hmm. uh, his sister introduced him to a small community of like-minded meditating people led by a mysterious yet charismatic man from Venezuela. Mm. With camera in hand, Alan documented 20 years of life inside this hidden society as the group's idealism began to unravel and revelations about the nature of the leader is brought to light. After finally extricating himself after two decades later, at the age of 44, he decided to use all his archives of the film footage to tell the complicated 20-year tale of Holy Hell. Currently, Will is a filmmaker living in Santa Monica, California. He's an advocate for personal freedom, dedicating his time to education, prevention, and empowerment. Self-empowerment. All right, welcome to the show, Woo! Will Allen. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so happy to have you. Thanks. And I actually came down to uh, one of your early screenings, um, your premiere screens down in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. So uh, I might have introduced myself, uh, but I, I, you had some of the other members there. It was quite uh, a moving experience, uh, not only the film, but then the aftermath, seeing mm -hmm. all of you. Mm -hmm. So um, you've been a, a man after my heart and telling stories and, and telling you know, these things that a lot of people have avoided and mm -hmm. and, and letting go of the shame and, and trying to educate and inform people. And so uh, we're very thrilled to have you on the show. That's what this mm -hmm. is all about. Sweet. Yes. Yes. So what I like to kind of start the story with is um, what we like to call the perfect storm, you know, because mm -hmm. that, you know, just kind of set, setting the stage or seeing mm -hmm. uh, to how this event that led you into this kind of group, how it, how it evolved out of where you were at that life, you know, at that point in your life, what kind of things were kind of um, going on so that you were in essence open-minded or receptive to kind of what maybe what this group or person mm -hmm. uh, was selling in essence on some level. Mm -hmm. um, so hmm. just kind of going back to how it all began and, you know, can you give yourself kind of, can give us kind of you know, where you, um, you know, a, a brief mm -hmm. synopsis mm -hmm. into kind of where you were anyway right. when, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a big synopsis, but yeah. it's easy. You know, you're yeah. in college. I was in college. That's right. when everything starts to really culminate and I was yeah. making films and my films were all very self like subjective mm. films. And by the end of college, I was pretty burnt out of film work in college and also very lost because I was really just didn't know what to do with my life or what it was all about Alfie. Mm -hmm. And, and um, after college, I went to college in, in Texas in Dallas and I came back and um, I was just really, really deeply, um, 
I, I want to say burnout because I think kids are burnout after college. Yeah. You know, they're really like now they have to go start and yeah. have two months rest and they're supposed to go make big decisions. And I wasn't really ready for that. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. I wanted to be a filmmaker anymore. And I had a voice come to me, literally. I remember standing outside going, you know, I want to make movies, but I want to make an original movie. I don't want to make a movie I've seen before. Because I was trying to rationalize, am I a filmmaker? Be careful what you wish for. Well, I, 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 <laughs> exactly. I had, you know, I oh, two you got years, original. Two oh, years, well, I had two years to research this movie. <laughs> Let me be more clear. Um, <laughs> but I, and, the vo and the voice, more or less, was just like, you need to go live your life. Yeah. You haven't lived your life. And right. Of course you don't know. Yeah. Because you don't know. And I was like, I felt so good when I heard just like, go live. Like permission. Yeah, it was like, almost. I thought a month. I thought a month of going to live. You know, a month. Maybe <laughs> yeah. I'll go do something. Yeah. And so um, things happened. And I, I was staying at my mom and dad's house in, in, in California. And, and I got kicked out one night because she read a letter I wrote that was talking about being gay and she had a problem with that not because of the gay part but because the AIDS was happening mm -hmm. and there's a lot of fear oh, happening as the 80s oh, and, right, and everyone right. was people were dying and yeah. and she was really 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 frightened about that and also she didn't want me to be gay and we had a big fight and, and I got kicked out and the next day I went to the group so so I mean where I was is in crisis mode yeah I mean the day before right. I was crying unstoppable Right. Yeah. And asking, I remember actually asking out loud, you know, like, please just show me people who can see me, right. who know me, who can, <laughs> who get can, me. can, can, who get can me. see me like yeah. deeper than I, yeah. than, than my mom can and yeah. everyone, all these people I need to be seen, you know, yes. that whole thing. And literally the next day, the next night, my sister had, had told me about this meeting and I told her I didn't want to go because I wasn't oh, ready. So your sister was involved? Or? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. My sister brought me. Oh. My sister had been there for nine months. Wow. wow. Yeah, and she's in the film, oh, yeah. and she was there before me, and she was telling me in college, like you, you, you've got to come to this thing. I'm gonna, sh you're gonna. She wouldn't tell me what it was. She was just say like it's amazing. I'm like, okay, come well, see that's it. so vague. <laughs> so I was like, well, you know, you we'll to, see. You have to so, see it to believe it. So I was right? home yeah. for three weeks before this event happened with my mom, and and the next day I was at my sister's living with her, and she's like, come, it's tonight, come tonight, and I was crying. I was like, I can't come tonight. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. <laughs> She goes, it's perfect that you're upset. And then she spoke to me. <laughs> well, she spoke to me in a voice that really wasn't her. I knew, I've known her for so long and she's always been my sister. Yeah. But then she spoke to me really like compassionately. Like she's like, you don't have to do it alone. <laughs> and I was like, the I, voice. Feel, I feel so alone. Yeah. You know, I'm like, wow, no one's ever said that to me. Like, yeah. I, there's like, what? I'm like, she goes, come, you'll just come and relax. I'm like, okay. So I went yeah. and she dropped me off at this house. And uh, she parked the car and she's, and this is when she told me what it was. She goes, they're going to be, she says, there's going to be people meditating. I'm like, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And now it was 1985 and I had read Shirley MacLaine's Out on a Limb. Oh, and okay. I yeah. love that movie, yeah. Yeah. that book. I mean, I went yeah. and saw her speak because I was yeah. like, no I one had ever talked too. about that. Right. Right. And so I was in college going, I want what she has. I want what she's, so that was my, I did have that in the back of my head. Yeah. There was nothing negative about meditation. Right. Although she was getting kind of roasted. By Hollywood, media. by Hollywood. Yeah. But she was still talking about things no one was talking about. And so, like the East, right. the Eastern religions. Sure, and, sure. and so when, when she says, they're going to be meditating, I'm like, okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 And she goes, and, and when you walk in, they might say, namaste, but you don't have to say it. Just say thank you. And, and people are going to be bowing down at a little altar. You don't have to bow down at the altar. Just, there's a seat for you. Just go in and sit down. Sure. I'm like, okay, great. So I walked on to this old house and there's incense everywhere. And I, I must've been taken back to another life or something. And I was like, wow. I'm like, oh my God, Champa. This is like, mm, this is so amazing. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. And so I walked up the steps and there was all these you know, shoes and people were bowing down. And I was like, and I saw all these spiritual masters from right. decades ago on the altar, like from okay. India, all these different, right. I didn't know who they were. Jesus was on there, okay. all different people. Right. Okay. Right. And I was like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bow down. <laughs> I was so tired not, of what I was, right? how I was raised wasn't working. And so I was looking for some alternative, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, just not, Christ, not not Catholicism. You know, I was yeah. looking for something other than being an altar boy. Right. So I was open and I was like, I bowed down and I went down and sat down and I loved it. Yeah. It wasn't weird. Nothing was weird. Mm -hmm. These people were just meditating. Yeah. Right. And he comes in, the teacher comes in, he was younger and he was really peaceful and mm -hmm. slow. And I never really had seen anyone that centered. Mm -hmm. sure. I didn't know how to, it didn't register to me. Like no one in college, no one had ever seen was really that, was that grounded, grounded, yeah. grounded. in something. 
And yeah. and he just spoke all these wonderful things. I felt like he was talking directly to me. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like he was saying things I'd made my movies about. I'm like, wow, this guy is like amazing. Yeah. So I liked him. I liked the group. Yeah. When I left, we'd share food with each other. They would share food with you. And they'd look right in your eyes, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And they give you food. And everyone was really good looking. Of course. For whatever yeah. reason, we're all in Hollywood, I guess. And this guy goes, he was like from, from he was French. And he's like, namaste, right? He says namaste. But all, all I heard him say was, stay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, That's I, all you will. <laughs> I will. I will. I'm going to. Like, like my name. I, I will. I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stay. Will. That's a terrible word. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard like, stay. Yeah, I'm going to stay. I'll come back. So I was like, it was harmless, you know, it was right. lovely. It was lovely. Um, and every, it, took, it took three years before anything started becoming so, neurotic so, so that, and crazy. So at that point, did you just start taking like these medication sessions with them? Or medication? Medication. Me- medica- yeah, yeah. No, medica- let's just talk about medication. Yeah, yeah. So I got, off all of medica- <laughs> I got off all medication. Well, what, uh, I'm yeah. curious, like, was, was, it, was, it, was, it, was it just sessions or did, were people living together? Okay, with okay. a communal? Or I'll like, tell you our, like, our, our, our weekly setup. So okay. once you get invited mm-hmm. to everything, once you start going regularly right. to the meetings, then you might get to go, you get to hear about something else and then right. something else. Right. Right. So right. they had events every day. So Thursday was the big satsang meeting. That was the first one I went to. What was it called? It was called satsang, which is an Eastern word, satsang. Satsang. You've heard about it. It's yeah. gathering of truth. There's oh, right. a teacher. Okay. And everyone gathers around. It's satsang. Right. It was an Eastern word, and that's what they okay. called it. So I was like, okay. So satsang was on Thursday, and it was like five hours. You get there at you know, seven, and you leave at midnight. Big event. Wow. I mean, it was in a house. It was really 30 people. It was really quiet at the time. Friday, they'd go to a movie. They'd go out to a major movie. 30 people. They'd save three rows of movies. They'd put like coats right. and save in the oh, premiere night in a movie theater in West Hollywood. And we created quite a ruckus because yeah. they'd sit there with their eyes closed and meditate. And the audience is like, who are these people? What's happening? But yeah. we weren't afraid. We were like, we're meditating in public. Yeah. So what? Yeah. You should all be med-. And we all thought we were doing the right thing. Right. Sure. sure. And so we'd go to movies on Friday. Saturday was kind of a free day. Wait, did you guys ever see The Matrix together? Yeah. Because all of our oh, cults yeah. all would watch The Matrix oh, yeah. together and use it as a selling oh, point. Oh, yeah. He would, we'd go see every spiritual movie or whatnot. <laughs> And he would, he would afterwards be all getting in the parking lot and he would talk about it. Right. Mm-hmm. He would right. talk about what yeah. the bleep, you know, we, we right. saw what the bleep. Yeah, right. And a friend of mine, who are you? A friend, <laughs> of mine, a friend of mine turned to me after we saw what the bleep, because that came out in 2005, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I was like, I love this movie. And a friend of mine who was, was turning against the teacher, she was, she was pulling away from him because she was realizing at this point that he was yeah. keeping right. us very, very controlled. Right. Correct. And she goes, I don't think he even understands this movie. And I'm like, Really? He doesn't understand like metaphysics and right? she goes, Nope. And I was like, because he's so in this and one thing of controlling these people right. and just sure. having a small group of people following so him. He really didn't want us to know that stuff. Sure. Right. Yeah. It so would make you think. Of he course. It makes you independent. You Correct. Where you're so, your own so what was the, for the audience, what was the timeline? At this point, you're just getting in that what year was that? that was so like, when I got in, I got in nineteen eighty five, I think. Okay. Eighty six. And they had a, a knowing session right away, which was was the big was the big draw was right. that he's going to open the knowing session yeah it was okay. it was where he was going to touch you and open your third eye right and 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 oh, kind yeah. of that's where enlightenment starts and that's where the right. seat of the soul right. and that's where you meditate and it's like that's going to be like instant i i thought it was going to be instant i i have to admit from because they don't tell you anything and you just hear people talking and you know they i would be in the group meditating in the in that mm-hmm. in that meeting and someone next to me would be talking saying I'm experiencing so much light. Oh my God, I'm experiencing so much love. <laughs> and I, we're like, oh my gosh, you know, like I Harry met to. Sally, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I'll have what she's having. Yeah. yeah. And so we all kind of, it became the desirable thing to have right. that experience, what right. they're talking about. Yeah. And so. And would you say there was like pressure? To oh, kinda, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, pressure yeah. to be good, to yeah. do the right thing, uh, to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so I was there for just a few months before they had a knowing session. So I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. But well, he said, not. yeah, right. <laughs> but then he said like, you know, but it'll be another soon. It'll be another one soon. very soon. It was four years until the next one. Really? really? Wow. And that during that time is when everything happened to me. Like everything happened in the preparation for that event. Because wow. I was wow. still so, I wanted that. That's what, because I never thought about, I wanted like God realization mm-hmm. or enlightenment. It wasn't something I, I grew up wanting. Mm-hmm. But because I was a filmmaker, I wanted truth. I thought right. documentaries and I wanted to know what the truth was. And so... Mm. When he started talking about, um, I also want to know what creativity was, Mm -hmm. the source of creativity might relate to this. And my first meeting with him was, um, he said meditation was the source of creativity. Mm -hmm. And so that was another thing that really anchored me. Like, because as a a filmmaker, I felt like I was, 
creativity was always hard to capture. And it was always, you're chasing in, it's a struggle to really, yeah, right. mm. to master sure, it, to sure, always sure. do something Harness new. It. Yeah, to yeah. do something new all the time. And if, if, if meditation was the source, I'm like, I'm in. I want to get to the source of that to make that job easy. Right. So creativity becomes easy for right, me. Right. Right. right? And that was one of my thoughts as a 22 year old, as well as I'll take this God thing. <laughs> He's handing out, you know? Yeah. Which, I, cause I, because the other thing that was going when on you, in my you, life. When you say this God thing, like what, what exactly? What, well, what, the this, knowing. Yeah. The knowing that they, they were talking about. Or like okay. connecting to God personally. Yeah. It's a personal connection. Right. A direct experience of God. Right. Sorry, we don't talk no. about it very much. And, it was and, a direct experience. And and was he positioned, how did he position himself in that? Well, originally equation. it was yeah. it yeah. was the teacher. There was a, there, someone has to reveal it to you. There right. has to be a conduit. Right, okay. Because it's As not just a good. self-awakening. Yeah. Right. It's not just right. like, woo, no, someone has the, to, yeah. the, the guru devotee type yeah. thing, right? Yes, the finger, yeah. he has to show you how to do it. And, yeah. and I didn't know what he was talking about because of all course we don't know because it's all very abstract. Right. I know, you don't know till later. Right. You're like, really? This was, you know, that's later. We're not, we're not there yet. So, yeah. Again, one of the motivating factors, which might relate to people, mm -hmm. is is I was a very happy person, but I'd also be very sad. Right. Mm, extreme? Happy, well, I guess so. In college, I was just like, I'd get sad, and then I'd be really happy all the time. I was a really good, happy person, but I had these ups and downs, which right. are normal. Like yeah. polarity, right. Right? right? But I thought something was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I was always trying to get rid of the sad and always, always be happy. Right. Right. Like Which is impossible. Well, I know. Well, well, I, mean, listen, I, I think, I think society says it all the time. You know, what do you do? It, do what makes you happy as, yeah. as, as if that's a state you're going to arrive to where yeah. you're going to only be happy, yeah. which yeah. is impossible. Yeah. Right. So but, yeah. he was promising like ongoing happiness. I mean, right. a lot of the <laughs> concepts were like, you know, if you're unhappy, you're just in your mind. So right. get out of that and go okay. here. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, there's a tool. Yeah. That I can start to learn to like mm -hmm. be in bliss and happiness. And so that was appealing to me. Yeah. You know, as, yeah. as, as a self, as a, as a solution, it wasn't just right. self-help. The other thing he said was drugs. Um, people use drugs, you know, to get to these experiences, but they become dependent on something on the outside. And, and really that experience is already organically inside of you. Right. So you need to learn how to nurture it. And a lot of that's through a lot of ways like devotion and love. And, right. you know, but I thought that made sense. Hmm. Like, I wanted to be intoxicated and in a natural high. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't do drugs for 20 years. We didn't do honey. We didn't barely did honey. Oh, really? Yeah, no sugar, no meat, nothing that would stimulate you, no caffeine. Really? Where's my caffeine? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah nothing like that. Because Obviously, it, no all, alcohol. No alcohol, no drugs, no yeah. pot, nothing. It all went away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were all Which, very healthy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in our group, we did something very similar. It was. Uh, it's, it's the beginning of all that kind of organic food thing, the whole new age thing. Yeah, going, I, I never went to a health food store until I met my guru right. and all this. And, and water. And, and, oh, yeah. You're carrying water. Well, well, yeah, all of that. So, yeah. And, yeah cause I think it's also interesting since we have a similar timeline we do. to set the context of what was going on no, at that time. Because no pagers, no right. cell phones, yeah. no internet. And, mm -hmm. and also there's there is this definite pushback on traditional religion at that time. Mm -hmm. People were basically saying that's not working for me mm -hmm. on some level. That's and right. and I'm, All of us were I'm open it. and investigating something else. And mm -hmm. so, and I would also say, and, 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 and I don't know if you felt this way, but everybody was into something. So, so whatever you found mm -hmm. yourself in, it didn't feel like you were isolated in some anomaly. It's like everyone was into mm -hmm. something, you know, mm -hmm. someone, they're either in some sort of practice that, I felt lucky that I found yeah. Something that was with such good people, right? You know, and he seemed like a good person. He was aloof for the first few years. He was always like come and go, and so none of us got to hang out with him and really get to see him. So, you know, it wasn't until you you'd see him for maybe eventually for, at, at the movies. Oh, right. It's always from afar. You know, only a few people were around right. him, so that made it. It's I, I, I compare it to the rings of Saturn. Right. You know, all the gaseous rings. Right, right. And the ones that are closer are have a different color, but they're also different, you know, yeah. intensity because they're closer right. to the planet. And the ones on the outside are, are part of it, but they're still a little, a, a, a different density, a now, different... Now, yeah. now, was, now, was that kind of set up as kind of a reward system that as you kind of evolved on your path, you would get closer to him? Well, I don't know if thing? that's reward or punishment, right? Well, I mean, yeah, in, in, hindsight. in hindsight. In hindsight, yeah. it's but, like, but, but it's I, mean, like I, liked it. I liked where I was on right. the purple layer of the cast. <laughs> I was like happy and right. like had friends and we were doing right. lovely yeah. things and we were helping each other and we were just like doing service and right, yeah. right. doing things that weren't about ourselves and right. loving it. And then he brought me in closer so then i come in closer so it wasn't a it, i mean every it wasn't there wasn't one way everyone had a different yeah. experience right. there wasn't right. like yeah. a, a method exactly but yes if he trusted you after a while he might bring you in closer right exactly and he trusted yeah. me i guess yeah whatever mm -hmm. but um 
Yeah, and so that changed things because then you get closer, and then the, you know the Oz. He's no longer right. <laughs> behind the so curtain. So magnificent, right? right. Yeah. Which which was really interesting. Tell me if you guys under, if this works for you too, um, because we were learning unconditional love right. mm -hmm. with sure. each other, yeah. and and he was teaching us it. Right. Like, he was telling us. That. I I felt like it was the only thing I could do is return that to him. So when I started to be around mm. him, I wasn't there to judge him. I wasn't there to pick him apart. I wasn't there to criticize him because we weren't doing that to each other because yeah. we were trying to like not be that person. Oh, so, so there weren't, there wasn't a lot of criticism. No, there was, there was the group? criticism, but not, we were really trying to learn how to love. Okay. You know what well, I mean? I think, right. yeah. yes, eventually there was criticism. Right. And of course he's breaking the egos in different ways and right. therapies and mm. classes, right. but just overall we weren't walking around. Right criticizing each other. So basically the, the currency that you guys exchanged was love. And the currency Our, he gave us was like, you are love. He taught us, because we, we weren't really right. loving ourselves right. at that age yet. Right. And so we were learning how to love. Right, right. And so when I started to be around him, I would say to myself, like, he's trusting me to show me these other parts of him. I'm not going to judge him. Right. Now, I mean, he wasn't showing me too much. I'm just talking about just yeah. some of his, him working with other people and how he mm -hmm. acted and him talking. I got to see him behind the scenes. And I was like, okay. It's like, I'm not, I don't know anything yeah. and I'm not here to judge. So that was, I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, but that was kind of the protocol. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I can identify with that in the sense of how, as I got close, as I got closer to the leader and, and spent time with them and I would see things that clearly seemed to be uh, hypocritical to so-called the principles and the way he was behaving. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember feeling like, oh, the fact that I'm perceiving it that way is something wrong with me? Of course, always, and and sure. and he's only trying to show this to me. So it's all it's always for my benefit. Like yeah. he's showing me all these different parts of myself that you I'm might uncomfortable. As well just sit here, yeah, because right? it's exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a fascinating yeah. process because you're you're constantly under the guise of thinking that this is this is all for my benefit, and if it's not making sense, it's because I have problems. I'm in the process. Yeah, yeah. Right, when right. things progressed with anything, we had a problem with. Yeah. It was always brought back to you. Right. What's wrong? Oh, with, yeah. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with you? Why are you? Well, let's go. He would even like one of the guys who he was um, in a relationship <laughs> with didn't want to be in it, you know, and told mm. him, "I don't want to do this." And he said, "It's in the movie." And he's like, "Oh, who are you resisting from your yeah, past? Exactly. Close your eyes. Yeah. Let's go back and find out <laughs> who is it that you don't want." To, right. you know that you're resisting he's like i'm resisting you <laughs> and he's like no 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 go 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 back further yeah and he goes back to like you know whatever right yeah. and uh, you know and yeah. and then he comes back he's like wow thank you so much i don't i didn't Thanks know i was so stuck me. yeah I, and, 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 I, and i think a lot of it what's <laughs> fascinating about that indoctrination process is i certainly know for me i got so seduced by the concepts and the mm. and the, and the principles so to speak yeah. and, and the idea that's of it that's what you're committed to yeah so so and, and once you've committed to that like mm -hmm. you're saying then as i'm seeing cracks in the veneer i'm trying to eliminate them and say oh that's not what's happening mm -hmm. when clearly it is mm -hmm. but that's that whole indoctrination process of, of not trusting the way I think, That's my right. critical thinking being eroded. That's right. So mm -hmm. it sounds it sounds like that, that was a very And then you have to compartmentalize you have it to somehow. Compartmentalize. Which is which is in a, in an odd way, it's so damaging to compartmentalize yeah. everything because you're cutting off parts of your sure. intelligence. Sure, right. Um but we were it's like you're cauterizing you part are, of yourself. You are. We, you have I to. carterized I carterized my I didn't know it until later. Yeah. My heart, which right. is like our guidance and sure. our gut, which sure. is our guidance. Those things were like we're, sure. we're stuck. And this here, though, is phew, totally wow. yeah. exercise, strong. Right. I can go there and not feeling, you know, I can go, I can disconnect. But um, yeah, so in that compartmentalization, mm -hmm. um, in a weird way, that's kind of what, I know that's not what meditation is, but in a weird sense, that's how he made it for us. It's like if you're in a heart, in a mind, in a mind, it. he'd be like, go, go connect. Right. Like, go here. Right. And so, Basically, don't listen to anything you're going. Shut off going your emotions, on. right? Right, and just hear me with yeah, your brain. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and amazing, right, yeah. and so that's what we did. Um, well, so, and you know, on what I've done a lot of research on, <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. how you develop that cult personality. They call it. Mm. It's a cult personality in order to survive. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you have to shut everything else yeah, off, and yeah. your your cult personality yeah. is just very cerebral. Yeah. How do I stay aligned with the group? Yes. Yeah. That's right. I'm kind of curious, like within 
the other members, how, was there communication between you guys along these lines of like seeing? Did you talk about any of that? Yeah. Not the bad stuff, not the bad stuff. Yeah, okay. Right. So and it all escalates to say, what you're, it just gets, the, right. the stakes get higher and higher every right. week, every so you month, wouldn't, every you year wouldn't gets higher. You wouldn't confide in each other saying, hey. No, so it, my best yeah. friend, my best girlfriend, yeah. we were like soul mates and. In the group, obviously. In the group. Yeah. And she was my caretaker and she would we loved each other and she would cook for me because i always do so much service i couldn't eat so she started cooking food for me we became friends forever and mm -hmm. we still are um and i wouldn't tell her what was going on and every once in a while because we would oh, tell wow. each other everything we tried to and one time i was just when i would talk to her about it, i would if i was going through something i'd be like i i, I can't talk about it i can't talk and she was like will or francesca what is going on like i can't talk about it i just can't talk about it she goes well tell me is it is it something to do with andreas i'm like yeah she goes, okay, well, let me ask you some questions. Is it, and she would say something, she would say so something. Andreas is the what leader. Was his name, he, that was his name at the, the time. The name he went by at That was the, the name time. at this time. He said like five I'm in Austin, awesome, sorry. It was like, <laughs> yeah. it was, and she goes, is he, is something happening sexually? And I'd be like, no, 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 no. It's not that, I can't talk about it, no. And I, and I would completely stop and, and I right. couldn't go there because I would be um, going against everything he he, he told me right. that right. I could do. I was like, I, I couldn't do it. Right. I would like, I might as well just leave. You know, I was like, yeah. I'm just gonna leave. I, I wasn't ready to do that, to right. tell her. So his, we, val we all valued his opinion more than even our best friend. Like we cared mm -hmm. more about what he, him, than we did even our closest friends. Right, right. right? Well, yeah. He overpowered well, it. Yeah, because, right. because, because he's closer to God, right? I mean, yeah. yeah and he can also like yeah. tear you apart or yeah. break you and, so, you know. So, mm -hmm. so what was, yeah, so, so how often did that stuff kind of happen? Where the, a lot. Like, you know, I mean, we, we, uh, cause I, I certainly know in my group, and I certainly know you did had some things. There's always that kind of breaking down of people. Mm -hmm. So, so how, how did that play out? Like, like, was it, was it, was it, like, someone, how did that would, build? Would, would someone, would someone, everyone had different ways, right? But would someone be put in front of the group and kind of mm -hmm. screamed so, at? Or? So, so back, going back to our scheduling, so yeah. Saturdays we had off kind of, right? Sundays we had um, an outing, which would be like an, an outing. We go to the we go to the beach, or we right. go hiking, or we go field to, trip, field trip, <laughs> with everyone for four hours in the afternoon, right. and then we'd right. have another satsang meeting with one of the other brothers. You okay, know, the older, and that would be a short meeting. You know, we all go have dinner afterwards on Sunday. Monday night was class. It was an acting class. He was an acting coach, right? He had gone through acting and oh, dancing mm -hmm. and everything. So we he would use acting, and that's kind of how he started in Florida before I met him. Is he had an acting class? And he had some of these people coming, and in, in the acting class, he would kind of bring in some meditation techniques or something. And so the the people in the acting class were really loving the meditation part. They're like, "Can you talk more about that?" Right. So he kind of divided it. So we always felt those two things oh, went together: so it the acting it, it and kind work, of evolved, yeah. working out the ego problems yeah. and acting exercises and, uh, okay. and exposing the ego, and then the meditation. So those became uh, two separate things. But he always those are two things he used yeah. always. And so we always had classes they were like four or five hours we have visuals you know people get up in the middle we do fun games exercises oh wait know, hard things you were always filming though correct i didn't film the class because i was like bad lighting but were you but <laughs> and these are four five hour classes spoken like a true filmmaker <laughs> bad classes, lighting like, i am never gonna look at this footage ever again <laughs> <laughs> this is like can you imagine 20 years of 52 uh, weeks of fight? Oh my God. Oh help man. Me. Well, but you were filming, just yeah, not, yeah, the what, not the class. Not the class. At what much. point did he, but yes. did he, did he approach you and say, sir, yeah. never, no. Oh, so, so I was, you did, you did it independently. Yeah. See, oh, this is me. This is oh, part of my, oh, cool. I want to say it's part of my, a couple things that were like my egos that right. felt like they kept me mm -hmm. protected from him because they were. Are they, sane? Things that kept, kept you me sane? sane, but they also kept strengthening things that were already mine before the group. Yeah. That were mine that he couldn't take away. Yeah. And so filming was something I just passionately was about, was passionate about. And so um, he, we would do all these outings. And I, I, again, I was really inspired by everything I was seeing. People were crying and laughing. I saw people changing and just things I'd never seen. Yeah. Um, and Oprah wasn't on television yet. You know, these things weren't <laughs> happening everywhere. Um, and so I wanted to film it. So I'm like, can I, and I, one day I brought um, an eight millimeter camera to the beach and I filmed it. And he looked at me like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm just going to film. Just gonna and he just ignored this. me. Because I don't think I was really close to him yet. I mean, he wasn't like talking to yeah, me yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like he knew who I was, yeah. but he wasn't like, you know, yeah. incommunicado with me. And uh, he was like, Staring at everyone yeah. still, you know. Right. I was back With there. that weird I was stare he yeah. had. I know, right? Well, that was the meditation. Ugh, so um, I made this and I made the first movie and I cut it and I made it to the Beatles song, uh -huh. Michelle My Bell. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 So, so I kind of really I know. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've had that sung to me before. Right? Go ahead. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm not going to ruin it for you. But, no. But we had just, it was just that day at the beach and all of us swimming right. and everyone playing and all of us and some beautiful shots. And it was just Michelle. And it was my first music video I did of him. And, and he liked it. And he could see that I wasn't going to like make him look bad and right. be offensive. And he was, but he never really was thrilled that I was walking around with the camera. Right. He'd always like, what are you doing? Sometimes he'd be like, what are you doing? Right. You know, and I'm like, I'm filming this. Yeah. You know, he's, and he'd be like, okay. So he trusts me. Yeah. And, and, he, and you were never capturing anything when it was go, things were going sideways. Never. Yeah, never. of course. Yeah. Oh, right. God, no. Yeah. No, never, nothing. nothing <laughs> never. That was the hardest like, thing about making like a movie. Like, from the back, the camera comes up, you know, while you screaming at something, yeah. that yeah, would yeah, not yeah. have been popular. No, that was no. the hardest <laughs> thing about looking through all the footage eventually going, God, Will, you only shot the good stuff. You yeah. only but, shot the beautiful stuff. Th that's the stuff that you don't be allowed to. I mean, I remember thinking mm -hmm. that, watching it, like, of course. You wouldn't be allowed to, to. Well, I was worried that it wouldn't work as a film because I'm like, here we are talking about all these things eventually, but all we see is we don't see it. And so then when I started cutting the film and I started laying just anyone's voice underneath right. anything, it all went together because yeah. it all was layered. Yeah. Because it all yeah. was happening. No, it, at worked, the same it worked time. great. Yeah. It worked yeah. great. So it they could talk out. about the good they could talk about bad stuff and see good. And you're like, yeah. it works because <laughs> yeah. I can see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Yeah. So because uh, it's, it, it's such a rare thing when and when you see these stories that people don't generally have that kind of footage. Right. I mean, it's not normally the cameras are not. That's there. why I made the movie. I would not yeah. have tried to ever tell the story yeah. if I didn't have all that footage. Right. I only did it because I had footage to share, and that made sense of my journey as well. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, so going back to me as a twenty-one year old, yeah. year old, saying I want to make a movie, you know, one day. <laughs> well, I gave that career up. I gave all that up, yeah. right? Yeah. Because he gave. We all gave up our careers. Yeah. Of course. And. Um, so when I was finally, uh, wait, what was I saying? Oh, so when I finally made Holy Hell, yeah, it wasn't till five years after I'd been out of the group and I really never thought I was going to ever look at the footage again. I thought, I'm just right. going to take it because I put so much time into this, yeah. into, this right. war, into this, but I'm never going to look at it again because I, I need right. to go forward and I need to make new dreams sure. and new ideas. Right. And, and but, but when I finally decided to make it, um, I, I, I decided this has never been finished. Right. I mean, mm. I started when I was 22 making this because I was so fascinated by it. And I'm still fascinated by it. Like, what happened? And what was the truth? So you asked me a minute ago, do we talk, do we talk to each other? And were right. we able to communicate? No, we really weren't. Right. Even not just like mm. close friends, but even friends who were just friends. So when I made the movie, even though the, the group broke up so ferociously, no one really told anyone what happened. No one knew my story. My right. friends didn't know my story. I didn't know their story. So there was right. no general consensus Nobody about what happened. What we were all kind of confused. Trying to figure um, it out. Nobody knew own. what was going on behind the closed doors. Yeah. Right. So when I made the movie and I interviewed, God, 30, 60, I, I interviewed so many people. I was just blown away at, at the Everyone's diversity. Right. Diversity of why people were there, their experience, right. and also what happened to them. And that was when I... Um, that was when Holy Hell became more clear. Right. right. Sure. That's when the whole okay. crystallized. Became All right. But before we get to that part, when, when you take your 20 year journey okay. backwards, you know, and get to the point where you decide to exit, mm -hmm. how, how would, how, when things started to shift and you started considering exiting, like, mm -hmm. what, what was that process? Because you've been great about kind of talking about some of the great things that were going on, some of the things that really you know, was beautiful about the group and some of the ideas. So when when were the cracks in the veneer starting to kind of unfold? And, and well, you the started cracks to started happening, you know, after three years for me, to be right. honest. I mean, that's yeah. when I started seeing, like I said, things I didn't kind understand. Of a point. And then he had, started having, you know, a physical relationship with me, which is a huge crack. Which yeah. Yeah. That broke me and, right. And, right. and changed everything. It actually ruined yeah. my whole spiritual, right. my, my journey. Sure. Yeah. But I was so committed to what we thought we were doing yeah. to the to the concept and to my friends mm -hmm. and helping new people experience what I what I was enjoying which was meditation right right, right. but then it got all twisted yeah. so the meditation wasn't ruined and that was right. all still intact you know um, so i saw f red flags but i completely uh, allowed them mm -hmm. and then um, it wasn't until the whole group broke up it wasn't until there's power in numbers there's power in people pulling away i used to say like one person coming to me saying We've all got to leave. This is crazy. We're like, you're not going to get 100 people to leave because you're you're acting crazy. Right. Yeah. So, right. so to tell a story, you have to have um, other people help you tell it. Yeah. And so I remember trying to get anyone out of a group like this. Yeah. I couldn't have gotten out if one person told me 
But right. if eight people came to me right. who I yeah. trusted, they said, listen, this is not what we started. We are all getting out together. We're all leaving. Right. I'd be like, don't go without me. I would right. literally be, don't go without me. Because right. Right. I was ready to go, but I wasn't ready to quit right. my commitment. So mm. when the group broke up and became divided, which is um, you know 22 years into it, right. became very divided. A letter came out that exposed the teacher for all these things and crimes that he'd been doing. <laughs> and everyone became, half the people were like, I don't believe it because mm. it hadn't happened. And the other people were like, I know this is true. Right, right. So half the people split on a dime and half the people were like, I've invested 20, 15, 10 yeah. years into this. I'm not going to leave like that fast. Yeah. And he's never shown that to me. So people were confused. Yeah. So it took him a while. Um, so I was still very confused. Well, I wasn't confused. How I, how I see it, oh my gosh, how do I explain this? I feel like I had that kind of rug pulled out from under me when I, three years into it. Right, right. That was when I got like, right. and I had no one to talk to, but I had love around me. People were still, all my friends were all the same. And so you stayed for the love. I stayed for the love and I could, heal, I could get through it all because we had the support. Sure. I'll explain it in a okay. minute. But at this point, when it when all the truth came out and everyone had like a hardcore crash, right. yeah. I felt like, well, this wasn't so shocking to me because I've been seeing this shit some of it yeah. Yeah. for so long. I had the morphine you, you, drip. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, I had yeah. the morphine drip and, the whole and, and way. And you'd so seen I'm, stuff firsthand. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I'd seen stuff firsthand personally, right. but then I'd seen his behavior, so that none of this was so shocking to me. It wasn't yeah. like he fell off a pedestal all of a right. sudden for yeah. me. Right. But for a lot of people, he fell off a pedestal. And it was shocking for them. And I felt, you know, I was crushed too because I was losing my spiritual family. Your and community. All, all my community and also my path that I thought yeah. I had committed to so long. How could this be wrong? How could I yeah. make a wrong, a wrong turn? And, you know, so that was all really hard. So, but I still had no um, means of really supporting myself or anything because I was like living right. in his house yeah. and I was his driver. Oh, so boy. he decides to leave Austin because he's being threatened by this guy. It's a great story <laughs> who comes after him with a bat Okay, wait, so oh, who's really? threatening Oh him? my gosh, this is such a great story, but it couldn't fit in the film. It was just like a note. A letter, a letter came out. That was, how, that was how you have to summarize 20 years. A letter yeah. came out. A letter came out. Yeah, but um, a guy who had been in the group back in the 80s, who was okay. kind of a guru basher back then, he'd go to all these other gurus and hate them, but he loved Michelle. Okay. He thought Michelle was it. But he had a big ego. Michelle, i.e. Andreas, yeah. i.e. Yeah. Reje. Yeah. Reje, yeah. yeah. That right. guy, okay. that guy. I, yeah. we, we called him the teacher in the yeah. movie just to make it easy for people. Yeah. But that's not, <laughs> we never teacher. called him the teacher. Yeah. It was just something we did yeah. because right. what are we going to call him? We're not going to call him guru because yeah. we didn't call him that. We're not going to give him that credit. Teacher is perfect. Right. Yeah. But um, I was saying that... Well, the, the guy with the, the bat. The, the guy with the bat. The yeah. guru so basher. He, so what's happening, what's slowly happening is he's taking advantage of boys mm -hmm. during cleansing during and straight boys. Aye, and, aye. Yeah, and saying stuff like, and even if a straight boy might have come to him with the confidence of like, you know, I'm so curious about my sexuality, even if that was something, here he's his, he's his, he's his therapist. But here's the the, the evil guru back right, there, right? Right. Yeah. Swirling his like right. cauldron, cauldron. <laughs> you know, like, oh, you're really in love with me, and we've had past lives together. Where oh, you, we should oh. continue to work this out. So this boy was like. Uh, no, I was just telling you about this. I'm not, so he went, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, so he went out because he was pretty well grounded. He had, he had a son. Yeah. He was amazing. We all loved him. It was like, it was like the Johnny Depp story, you know, like, sorry to say that, but you know, <laughs> everyone loved this guy. And, yeah. and when he said what happened to him, we all believed him. Yeah. yeah. Right. He wasn't going to make it up. So he went and told some older people, like, this is what's going on. And they were furious and they, had, they were all ready to like, just pick up and leave because mm. we, they knew this was going on, yeah. but no one could prove it. Right. No one right. could talk about it. No one knew it for sure. This guy's, so a lot of people really rebelled. I um, mean, at that point, did did you chime in on what your your relationship with him and all that? No. Or, oh. oh, God, no. Okay. All right. No, no, no. no. Yeah, but this yeah, guy, it was yeah. just too quick. It was just, yeah. this was all that happened. Right. ready. Well, it wasn't, yeah, exactly. When you're ready to tell your story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, it's yeah. baby steps, you know. Right. Sure. But wait, so what happened with the guy with the bat? Okay, I gotta so, know. So one day, I was, <laughs> so, he would, so, so the teacher would have therapy sessions like from noon till four in the afternoon. And he'd see like five people or six people for therapy. Yeah. And so this guy's had his wife. He brought his wife back to the group 20 years later. Okay. He looked for her for 15. He yeah. didn't come with us to Austin. Right. He brought her back. He'd set his home up, set his business up. Then he found out all this stuff about the teacher being a sexual abuser. Right. And all the stuff to some of his friends from back in the 80s and the 90s. He was furious. And he was a bully. And he had a big ego. He'd actually been banned from Texas for being in fights because he's from Texas. Really? Yeah, literally. Like 
couldn't be in Texas. So, <laughs> so this guy comes with a bat into his house, and I wasn't at the house at the time. I was swimming at the beach at the at the pool, and he, apparently he comes over, barges in the house, barges in his room, grabs his wife, says, "You're coming with me," and you, and blah blah, blah and starts hitting the TV and hits some things and breaks things, wow. and says, "I know what you've been doing. Confess. Tell me you've been having sex with these boys." And he's like, "I have not." He goes, "If you don't tell me, it's gonna be worse." And he's like, "I haven't <laughs> been doing it." And I, you know, it's like, "Oh my god!" So, so I, I come home. And Where was your camera now? <laughs> right, right, right. I was like in the car going. <laughs> <laughs> I was like so glad I wasn't there. I was like, this has to end. All this yeah, has to end. Right. This is not my story. And that was that was my breaking point is when I realized this wasn't my story anymore. Yeah. Like I, I mm. kind of identified with all of it because I felt like, well, I'm in this. We're all here together. But then when all this was happening to him because of him, because of his activities, right. because of who he was, I go, this has nothing to do with me. Right. This has always been you creating mm. all these problems and yeah. all of us are just here to meditate. We're all, we're not really doing anything right. wrong. Right. You're the one. So on I'm the denominator totally of the problems of everything. You've yeah. just hurt so many people. I go, this is your problem. Yeah. And so that was one of the things, but he had decided to leave immediately because this guy was going to come back after him with a bat. Um, <laughs> and rightly so yeah and so he got in a car and went to corpus christi which is like three hours away and i drove him because you're the driver because i'm the driver yes. and i remember looking at my friend tracy <clears throat> and this is upsetting this is sad for me because this was um this was hard mm -hmm. for me to to, to say, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. No, well, sure. it's, no, how many yeah. years of your life? <laughs> well, it's yeah. also the more you commit, the more you're in. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a marriage, no, you know, you're course, like, I can't yeah. just, and I remember yeah. looking at her going like at the window and he was at the passenger window talking to some people. I'm like, I go, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I go, I cannot. Mm. Well, I mean, I, go, I cannot it, it, it's grieving. hide his it's, sins. It's, I cannot, it's, it's yeah. grieving a relationship yeah. too. It's a death. Well, everything, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was all falling apart and my best friends were like yeah. hating each other. And it was like so bad. And no one yeah, knew what to traumatic. believe. And so I go, I can't do this anymore. And she goes, yeah. she goes, okay, just just drive him down there. You have a car. Right. If you want to leave, you can Take just off. get in the car and come back. I'm like, okay. So I drove him down for three hours and he talked to me the whole time about his life. Of course he did. He's just going over it all. Like, I never did anything. And then, and then, yeah. And he, he told me everything. And I met my teacher and then this happened. And I was sitting there going like, Okay, I've heard that part of this story, but I've never heard that. And he was filling me in, like telling me for some reason all these things. Yeah. Which I heard later he was lying. Yeah. I mean, were you, were you, were you sensing it was BS at that time? Or where was your... No, because some of it was... I could, some of it I'd yeah. heard throughout the 20 right. years from different right. people. And I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. And so you're filling it in. Right. Yeah. So you never... You had a teacher, but you didn't stay with him. Right. Because he would never talk about his teacher. Right. And he would never tell his lineage because he didn't have one. So here is a person telling us... To like surrender, yeah. to surrender, and do all these. No, he's, he's never he, done it. He's so really, similar. To, so the, similar. Yeah, to he Hoyt. read everything, and this yeah. Is, yeah. so I'm going to be the. I'm going to be the teacher. So he, in, 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 one of my friends once said, "How sad he never benefited like we benefited from mm. us. He never got to do what we did. Yeah, because he was over here removed, be, right. being the teacher, never did the work. But whatever. I mean, he had his own story. Yeah. But we were getting the work done that we felt we were trying to do. Right. In spite of him. Right. So, so did you get in the car and go leave? Or what, did, what happened? Oh, I drove him. I listened then, the whole time. And then... And then um, did you come? Did you drop him off and come back with the car? I didn't, no. Oh, no okay. No. Because, right. because I had a boyfriend at this point in okay. the group who I was very attacked. He actually helped me get out. Okay. Because all my love kind of switched mm. it to him. Yeah. And I, that was lucky. That's why he didn't want you to have relationships in the group because the love... Because they could become your an anchor. Your right. unconditional love can now go to that yes. person. Yeah. And it goes away from... I think this is a good cliffhanger. I know. Yeah, right We're now gonna, for the first uh, first our, episode. Our producer we, we, gave us we, the warning. We want to find out what got you over the, the bump, yeah. the, the, the exit. And, uh, I think so this, this is, is part one. Is okay, part, We're going to bring you back for, for part two. Right. So stay tuned, everyone. Do I change yeah, my clothes? Was, uh, no, we'll, we're just going to stay. Okay. You're, you're, you're a wonderful storyteller, Will. I know. I'm, 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 I'm so captivated, and uh, uh, I, I really feel what you went through. I mean, yeah. I went through so much similar stuff. I can't. It's all so similar. Mentally, it's hard to find someone that's yeah. kind of the same kind of like logic. We, mm -hmm. uh, uh, brother, uh, we could talk like I can't yeah. t tell you how similar it is to what I went through. Unbelievable. Really. But, and even though mine was yeah. based on Jesus, yeah. still the same. Yeah. Yeah. Same um, party, different costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's or, the, or is there a last guest? What, what did Ashley say? Same shit, different smell. <laughs> oh, never heard that one. That's a good one, right? Yeah. Thank you, Ashley Freckleton, for that <laughs> Same one. Same shit, different smell. It's <laughs> an homage makes to you Ashley. Think, yeah. Makes you think for a moment. But it's yeah, right? how accurate yeah. is that? Yeah. 
All right. Oh. So we will close out. We will bookend this with our, our quote. We will reread it. It's going to, mm-hmm. it even resonates more now. Okay. Turn your demons into art, your shadow into a friend, your fear into fuel, your failures into teachers, your weaknesses into reasons to keep fighting. Don't waste your pain. Use it to recycle your heart mm-hmm. by Andrea Balt. All right. Perfect way to really end. Love it. Really love it. Great. And, and part remember two to is guard up. your hearts and your minds, my friends. Don't let anyone else have control of those except you. We'll see you next time. For Stay part tuned. Two, part Will two. Will Allen. Yes. Bye.